Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this last episode of The Boardroom for 2017. It's going to be a great episode, but I'm really excited about the things to come in 2018. But first, my name's Charles Horton. I'm a serial entrepreneur, started a check verification guarantee company right out of high school, practically. Uh, sold that at uh, age 30 to hit my goal of being a, a millionaire by, uh, by 30. Currently working on the billionaire by 50 goal and I have four months left to do it, so let's see some big stuff coming in those next four months. I keep giving uh, Rick, one of my uh, investments, a hard time that the, the weight is all on his shoulders. He's got to grow the business really quick to get me to that goal. But uh, actually, you know, I've, uh, I've, some of my friends have said, let's go ahead and add another five years to that goal. So that's what we're doing, and I feel pretty confident about that five-year <laughs> number. Got a lot of really exciting things coming, and I'm going to share some of that, uh, some of that with you. You, uh, with you today. This presentation is not a presentation to buy securities except for accredited investors. So this is for informational use only unless you are an accredited investor. Now next year, uh, by mid-year, we're going to change this up uh, dramatically and I'm going to tell you a little bit about that in a uh, second. First of all, you're going to want to write this date down and you're going to want to buy tickets today. The next boardroom date is January 11th. I didn't mess that up, did I, John? I'm, I'm good at messing the date up when I put it out, but it's January 11th. So yesterday, Amber and I had lunch with the uh, business development director for Mark Cuban Companies. And I, I went in and I said, you know, what's my objective in this meeting? And I really didn't have one. So my intent was just to sit there, be a sponge and, and learn. And I learned a lot. So a couple of the things that I learned is their success rate is 90% percent on the investments that they do. And if you're familiar with entrepreneurship, it's exactly the opposite on success. One in 10 companies will still be in business five years after they, st after they start, and they're doing 90%. And he's, he told me in the meeting what their, what their uh, systems are to make that success, and he's willing to share them. And, and he, he suggested to me that we collaborate and work together. So his name is Abe. He's going to be here for his first boardroom hopefully of all of them, uh, on January 11th. So you're going to want to come. The, uh, dis our, if, if you don't know, we have a VIP dinner before where some of the speakers come in. We have dinner, and, uh, and those who buy the tickets get to sit around and talk business. Uh, we're only selling uh, a limited number of those seats. They, they definitely will sell out. He'll be here for dinner. Come join. Good, good, good guy and very, uh, very willing to help. Uh, he runs all of the investments that they do. They currently have 75 uh, Shark Tank companies that, they're, that he's managing and 75 of uh, Mark's own uh, private equity investments that they run. Really, 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 uh, really exciting. Looking forward to having him as part of the boardroom, and I think that's going to take us to take us really to the next level. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that too with the boardroom edge. Uh, the boardroom edge, uh, uh, Denise told you about it. We're starting a networking group. We expect it to be a worldwide group. We're starting, I say, uh, Denise, I mean, Amber said we're starting in January. We're actually going to do a trial run next Thursday. So if you're around next Thursday and you want to come up for our trial run, that's December 14th here at noon. I'll put the tickets on uh, for, uh, for uh, it'll be noon next Thursday. I'll put the tickets on Eventbrite uh, in the morning. By the way, uh, VIP tickets and the uh, early bird tickets for the 11th boardroom are discounted today and today only. So if you want to come next month, go ahead and buy them. There's 10 discounted tickets available. And if you want to join the VIP dinner, uh, that's going to be first come, first serve. So buy your tickets right away. That will, that will sell out. Next week on December 14th, we're going to be doing, again, our first boardroom edge meeting. Uh, how those meetings are going to work, they're going to be around town. They'll be um, uh, weekly meetings. You don't have to go every week, but they'll be available every week. And it's basically going to be a networking event education, and uh, we'll do a mastermind for the group each time as well. So the subject matter for the 14th, uh, for the 14th boardroom will be twofold. First of all, it's going to be what I learned about Shark Tank and, and the Mark Cuban investments, and there's a whole whole list of it. it uh, Amber and I went, and, and we, uh, I didn't, I wanted, I wished I would have had a video camera for this, but I'm going to get him to come back and tell the whole story at some point. But we learned a lot, and we took notes, and so I'm going to share all of that with you. 
know, and uh, business uh, business corporation type uh, structures. We're going to talk about that for about 15 minutes as well because a lot of people are confused about what uh, what structures they should use and why in setting up their their businesses. If you uh, even if you don't have a business, it makes sense to come up with one because the uh, tax advantages of doing it are strong, and I'll, I'll briefly touch on that. So really excited about the boardroom edge. How uh, how the boardroom is going to change my goal by next uh, by next June is we are going to Abe is is giving me information on how to really pour in people that want to pitch. He said that to be on Shark Tank is as diff is more difficult than getting in Stanford University. I haven't looked up the status on how difficult it is to get into Stanford, but uh, apparently they only do 36 uh, presentations a uh, year and they have thousands and thousands and thousands of people vying to uh, vying to do that. So I'm looking to get that going here. And then I'm, I've, I've got the uh, website name Crowdfunding Edge. And with Crowdfunding Edge, we're basically going to open this up to uh, maybe millions of uh, investors at one point. But we're going to run the business using Abe's advice. We're going to run the business using the, uh, the systems that they put in place. So if, if uh, in the future, if you become a boardroom uh, 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 awardee or you, you become, we <coughs> invest in you, then uh, we'll have the crowdfunding edge to fill anything in that we don't fill. And we're going to run you with the same systems, essentially, that they, that they use through the Mark Cuban companies to make sure that uh, you're as successful as absolutely possible. That's going to be a great advantage to the to uh, crowdfunding investors who can basically invest alongside us and then uh, get that same benefit of using those uh, those systems. So really excited about that happening. Uh, crowdfunding Edge is the uh, website domain, and uh, I'm I'm in the process of registering with the SEC for that uh, now, and it's actually a faster process than I thought. I was originally planning on June. It could be as early as uh, April that we uh, that we get into that. So please come on out on uh, December 14th if you're interested. It'll be about an hour and a, and a half session, it includes lunch, and we'll put the tickets available. We're limiting it to uh, 40. The people that are most likely to be coming are those of you that have indicated that you want to be uh, you want to be chapter directors with us, which means you want to run some of the individual groups that we have around town. If you haven't heard about that and you want to do that, be sure and talk to uh, to Denise about that. Uh, we're we're in that rapid uh, we're in that uh, design stage right now. And and as I've uh, we had I had a day full of appointments today, and I told uh, Aaron and Cedric that what I said two days ago has all changed and. That's kind of how designing a business goes. You know, you're, you're, we're in the design process, and we're going to keep changing it till we get that uh, that right thing. So, really exciting 2008 coming up, and uh, thank you for coming. And I hope you'll. 18, we, and hope you'll join us for that ride. Now, for the uh, for the boardroom presentation, just giving everybody a reminder, our uh, presenter, Mosquito Steve, tonight will be coming up. He has been told that he has 15 minutes to give his presentation. He says he's going to do it in 10. How unlike some of our uh, <laughs> some of our presenters have gone a little long on that on that end. And then the uh, panel will ask uh, 15 minutes worth of uh, questions, of which uh, Mosquito Steve can answer those questions. Then comes the advice section. Each of the panelists will give advice during this time. Steve is not allowed to speak at all. Very difficult thing. And, and Joan has, a, uh, has a, a zapper wand that she'll hit you with if you try to, <laughs> to speak. Best part of the evening is after the panel has finished with advice, then we go to the, uh, we go to the audience. This is a mastermind. We want to know what you think of the idea, the product. During this time, again, it is advice. You're not allowed to ask questions. What can you not ask? Questions. questions. So this, this period's for advice only. Uh, and without further ado, let's bring up Steve. Come on up. Right. He's really excited. This is going to be all about him. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, you need the pointer. I need the pointer, yeah. Well, let me give you the pointer. <laughs> all right. Hi, everybody. I am Mosquito Steve. So I'm a co-creator of the world's most effective mosquito repellents. And so that's what I want to impress on you tonight is that these are the most effective mosquito repellents in the world, period. They just happen to be natural. They're made from essential oils and natural surfactants. 
So um, I've worked with, I work with two chemists. I got one in California and one in uh, Dallas. And we worked together to create these products. My first product I created in 2011, which was a misting product. Does anybody in here have a misting system in their yard? Okay, probably you're like me. You can't afford them. <laughs> now, misting systems are very, very expensive, but that was the first product. I was the first guy in Dallas to do misting systems. And so I learned early on that most of the products that they sell for misting systems don't actually work very well. So our products are, they don't have chemicals, so we're DEET free. On our spray-on repellents, we're permethrin and pyrethrins free. I know some of y'all have heard about the botanical insecticide out there. That's actually not a, a, it sounds friendly, but it's not that friendly. It's actually one of the most toxic chemicals out there. So they always combine these products with something called piperonyl butoxide. And they don't tell you that, but that's always in there. So uh, if it says it's, I guess, you know, you've used that. Y'all have used that here before too. So, um, so I can say safe on kids and pets because we are EPA exempt. And I'll go into that a little bit more uh, later on. But that's a very important thing to be able to say safe on kids and pets. Look for that on the labels. If you think you're getting a natural product and it doesn't say safe on the label or in the advertising, then it is not safe. So uh, we have uh, been around. We formed the company in 2011. We did our first sales in 2013. We've uh, grown 3,000% in sales since then. And so we do have a little company, but we're just here in North Texas. So uh, DEET and permethrin. So let me talk a little bit about the chemicals. One of the reasons I got into this is because um, I, was, I was treating people, we were putting systems in, and, and these people had kids, and they were saying, well, is this stuff safe to use around the kids? And I was like, well, yeah, that's what all the guys tell me. Sure, it's safe, it's safe. And then I started doing some research and finding out um, that these are neurotoxins that we're spraying out there. And not only that, but most companies that install your systems, most of these companies are spraying about 10 times the legal amount in your yard that you're supposed to use. So, uh, and they're not going to tell you that in the sales pitch. <laughs> so, um, so one of the things that you're going to find about me, my company, we're really more of a research and development organization. So most of the guys in the industry are sales organizations. I'm really about research and development, but I need to become a sales organization, and that's really why I'm here tonight. So uh, mosquitoes have been building resistance to most of these products. Not only are they toxic, most of these products... They don't work because mosquitoes have built up resistance. Mosquitoes in North Texas, their larval stage is one to five days now. Just a few years ago, it was, it was two weeks. So that's how quickly they adapt because puddles don't stick around. We had a drought, and puddles didn't stick around that long, so they adapted. So every time a female mosquito lays 250 eggs, they're that much more advanced than she was. And so they change rapidly. So according to the WHO, the mosquitoes are the deadliest animal in the world. Now, some people don't know that, and some people don't think they're really animals, but um, I have had more than 1,000 mosquito bites in one night, and I can promise you they were animals. <laughs> and uh, so their diseases, obviously, uh, their ve vector-borne diseases actually are almost 20% of the global deaths. So, uh, so you've got still close to a million people dying from just from malaria every year. And so that's a ridiculous number, people. It's absolutely ridiculous. So, uh, in fact, I've tried to get into Africa because I, could, I think we could save at least a quarter million lives a year because most of these are kids. They're babies. And so you're looking at a child dies every 30 seconds from malaria. So that's a horrifying number. So, uh, and not only that, more than half the country lives in areas where mosquitoes are rampant and carry diseases. So that's a pretty big market. That's about, uh, about 4 billion people. So um, mosquito control, as far as the uh, pest management side of the business, is actually pretty small. So it's only, only about 55% of the pest control operators out there uh, do mosquito control. And there's a good reason for that because it's really hard to do and most of them don't know how to do it. Uh, but the great news is that's grown just in a few years from, um, from less than 40%. So, uh, so they're, the, customers are ask, the customers are demanding this, just like the consumers are also demanding that the products be natural and more organic. The spray-on repellent business in the U.S. is a billion dollars. 
So, uh, so just most of y'all are familiar with Off. Uh, that's the product you're going to see most often, and, uh, and it's DEET. And so uh, they're selling about a billion dollars, and they've got about 80% of the market right now. So uh, municipalities, you know, uh, most people don't even know, but cities have budgets to get rid of mosquitoes. And so in Dallas, um, our budget's pretty small, but Florida alone spends almost $50 million to get rid of mosquitoes every year. And do they still have mosquitoes? Yes, they still have mosquitoes. Isn't that odd? <laughs> so um, my testing, because um, I'll talk a little bit more about my testing. So what I do and what sets me apart from everybody else, most of these people, and the reason their products don't work is they're creating these products and they're testing them in a lab. Mosquitoes raised in a lab are not like the ones outdoors. Remember I was telling you about how quickly they adapt outdoors? They're not adapting to anything indoors. They're not adapting to anything in the lab. And so they're adapting outdoors. So what works in a lab doesn't necessarily work outdoors. You got companies like Bayer, these multi-gazillion dollar companies that have tried to create natural mosquito repellents and they create these products and they work great in a lab and then they introduce them and they just wasted a whole bunch of money because the products don't work. And so uh, Bayer actually scrapped their natural products program. And so they don't know how to do it. I'm very fortunate uh, because I hooked up with a chemist and he knows how to combine and how to layer the essential oils. The difference is he didn't have any way to test the products. And that's where I became Mosquito Steve. So uh, in 2008, I got West Nile virus. Um, I was doing control counts and testing um, other products. And that's when I uh, took more than 1,000 mosquito bites in one night. It was probably closer to 2,500. So um, I had 6,000 land on me uh, in a control count uh, one night. So, uh, and they got really sick after that, imagine that. So, um, I've had my testing has been validated. Actually, that night I was with Dr. Jeffrey Seabrook, Dr. Jeffrey Tucker out of Houston. Um, the guy, he knows more about mosquitoes just about than anybody, and he will tell you what he told me. He thinks I've discovered the Holy Grail because he said all the big chemicals, that's what they're trying to do. They want to create a natural product that actually works. There's natural products out there, but none of them work. And so he thinks I've discovered the Holy Grail. There's also uh, Dr. Ray Thompson. Dr. Ray Thompson is a well-known uh, entomologist up here in Dallas, and he wrote a report on my spray-on repellent, saying it was one of the best he ever saw, and he observed me doing the testing. So, because that's one of the first things people say is, well, you know, that's just you out there counting mosquitoes. No, I've had, it's usually me and other people. We've got video of it. We've got all kinds of things. So it's been validated. This is not just me with some harebrained idea to go outside and count mosquitoes. So um, this, in fact, this is a sample of the data. So I've actually done hundreds and hundreds of these tests. I've tested not just my products, but I test them too. I can tell you how long DEET lasts. In fact, most of y'all, if you're using off and with DEET in it, you're getting about 45 minutes of protection. And the CDC reported that if you apply DEET a second time, it doesn't work. So you're getting 45 minutes of protection, that's all. So that's not very good. That's actually not very good at all. So uh, uh, we are EPA exempt. So the EPA puts out a list called the 25B list. And all the ingredients on that list are so harmless that they don't require registration. That's why this is so important. Because other products cost millions of dollars and take years to get on the market. Well, with EPA exempt products, I can change the formula slap a new label on it and have it on the shelf tomorrow. So the EPA, EPA tells me um, what goes on the label and they tell me um, uh, other than that, it's just it's what's on the label and what I advertise. And that's why they're the ones that say, I can say safe and the other guys can't say safe. Uh, we have uh, retail and commercial products. And there's a reason for that. Because I get a lot of people that say, well, Steve, you really should do just commercial or just do retail, and there's a reason why I do both. So my first product was the misting product, and as we were out there selling it, um, I was telling people, hey, use this in your yard, and it's going to protect you from mosquitoes. But West Nile virus is going around, and I can't say it'd be irresponsible for me not to say, but you need to wear a mosquito repellent. And so I hated to tell people, put some DEET on and then go outside your natural mosquito mister. And so we created the... Um, this is uh, our first mosquito repellent. So this is a spray-on repellent. This is actually the most effective mosquito repellent in the world currently. So deep woods off with 25% DEET um, breaks down at less than two hours. 
at three hours, we're still over 90% effective. And so this is, and any time I say I've tested a product, it's at least 10 times. So, so this is the most effective mosquito repellent in the world. The good news is I've actually got a new version of it right here, the black label stuff. Um, and it actually it smells like men's cologne. This is really cool. So, uh, and it's 98% effective for over three hours. So it will be the new um, most effective mosquito repellent in the world. So we've also got yard sprays for do-it-yourselfers. So I've got the hose in spray. Um, so we've got people can fill their own misting systems. But I also sell to commercial guys. So Mosquito Next just signed up. Does anybody know? Everybody know Mosquito Next? So they're one of the big boys. They got about 30,000 customers out there. So they signed up with us last year. They put us in four of their locations. And he just got through telling me they're fixing to open up to all their locations. So they're very pleased with the product. Um, and they've been using toxic stuff. They're about sales, and that's they're one of the, the organizations I like to talk about because it's about getting a, a contract signed. And that's what most of those organizations are. Just get the contract signed. That's what matters. You're probably never going to see that guy again. And most of the guys that I work with, the same guy is going to come treat you that's going to sell, uh, that sells your product to you. Um, so I actually designed some misting systems, too, that come under uh, the radar. They're a lot less expensive. The problem with misting, to really take care of your yard... This is the bottom line. To take care of your yard, you need to spend about $250 a month on filling your misting system, which is going to cost you about $3,000 or more. And then you're going to have to have your yard sprayed twice a month, and that's going to be another $200 to $250. So $500 a month just to keep your yard protected from mosquitoes. And that's about as good as you're going to get. So I know we've got people that spend a lot more than that. But people say, well, Steve, you know, rich people don't mind. Let me tell you, they do. I don't know anybody that likes spending $500 a month on mosquitoes. In fact, nobody's got it in their budget. So, um, so what I've been working on is a way to bring the cost of mosquito control down to. And that's what this ugly contraption is right here. And Charles can tell you, So, because I treated uh, one of Charles's parties, and we sprayed this thing. So it covers one acre in 90 seconds. So, uh, so you spray it 90 seconds. We sprayed four times back there. No mosquitoes, no flies. So, so it's amazing. So we, can, we believe we can make this thing and retail it for about 400 and your refills will be about $30 a month. So all of a sudden, there's only half a million misting systems in the country. Well, this reached a whole new market because now all of a sudden you can reach people that can, can't afford that. So you're probably talking about another 50 million households. Um, okay. So our commercial sales uh, comprise most of our business. It's about 90%. Um, the other 10% is our retail. It's not because people don't like our retail products. I'm just in 14 retailers right now. Uh, it's been mostly just me doing everything, and so it's hard for me to get out there. But the main thing is that we're selling little bottles um, uh, in retail, so you've got to sell a whole bunch of those to equal what we're doing in commercial. That's why I like the commercial, and it costs less to get in and we can expand easier and, and uh, get the products out there. And, and they seem to, to work off each other. It's like a, a cycle. People that like our commercial products like our retail products too. Um, retail sales right now are limited to North Texas and online. And right now I'm the guy that gets up in the morning and I box everything up and I ship it out. So if you order something from me online, we're just now getting to Amazon, but I'm having all kinds of trouble with it. So there's one of those areas that I need help in. So. Um, Right now, funding-wise, I've taken about $80,000 from angel investors. Um, I myself have about $100,000 in this. And so, uh, so that's what got us here. We've been bootstrapping for a while, but like I said, we've been mostly research and development. Now that we've got the best products, I believe it's time to really you know, launch out there. Uh, we are looking for $2 million. Uh, that's to get uh, this and another sprayer, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but get those launched and uh, for building up inventory. Uh, we have had more than $600,000 in sales in the few years we've been doing this. Okay, so this, here's our projections now. I know everybody said, oh my God, here we go with the hockey stick. You know, everybody just has that hockey stick. Yeah, I got a hockey stick here. So that's based on this. In 2006, I met with Walmart and I had my first portable mister, this big metal clunky thing. And they said, you know, if you could ever bring something in under $250, we'll sell 50000 of them a year. I was like, wow, that's great. If you can ever bring something in under 100 bucks, I'll sell a million of them a year. All right, so I'm lighting up. And they says, if you ever bring anything under 50 bucks, we'll sell millions and millions of them every year. 
Well, you can't make a mister for under 50 bucks and make money on 50 bucks. Well, I actually worked with an engineer in Arkansas and we have developed the technology. We have a little patio mister that'll sell for under $40 and refills will be about $15 a month that covers a 10 foot by 10 foot area. You can have dinner outside with no flies or mosquitoes for four to five hours with one 90 second spray. So now all of a sudden you're reaching everybody. Uh, today's consumers are the ones that are driving this market. Uh, moms are driving this market. They don't want to spray DEET on their kids anymore. So everybody's looking for a natural product. I work with the city of Dallas some. We've been trying, been trying to get them. They've tested the products, trying to get them to use them. Um, they have a hard time understanding repellent rather than killer. And so that's been our big uh, barrier with them. But they said every time they announce that they're going to spray, they get thousands of calls and letters. People say, do not spray my yard with that stuff, which is good. Keep that up. <laughs> so uh, eventually, so what's great is that's about a $400 million slice of the market. So there's an or organizational meeting uh, called the American Mosquito Control Association meeting, which I can tell you right now, I hope none of those guys are watching because it is the most boring thing you can ever imagine. <laughs> I mean, these guys take all their wives there for their vacation. That's what they do. So, uh, but... But let me tell you, there's about $150 million bought at that organization meeting. And so uh, some of the money that I'm asking for, I'd like to be at that meeting, at the pest control meeting, at all those meetings, so I can meet these guys face to face, uh, bring my chemist along. And I believe, you know, I think we can make back our investment in a, you know, a couple of meetings. So um, I do radio interviews and TV interviews all over the country. Um, I'm known as an authority on mosquitoes, so it's not just... Uh, they, there's nobody else that does what I do. I mean, there's literally just nobody else that does it. So, um, so if you want something, I'm weird. I'm just weird. That's all. Okay, so here's our little mister. This is the thing. So, so imagine if we could sell, you know, just a million of those a year and then the refills. And what's great is five years of refill business, let me tell you guys, it just it grows exponentially. So, what? Oh, 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 okay. All right. I'm sorry. I have a director now. <laughs> Yep, that's it. That's it. Don't take a picture of that, though. I don't want anybody to copy it. No, it's hard to tell. So, uh, but anyways, the thing really works. Now, these, all these products I've tested outdoors. So this is not just, you know, me, me guesswork. This is, uh, I've done all this and tested them all outdoors. So, uh, currently, currently there are no other natural products that actually work. Uh, Picardin is the closest thing we've got, and Picardin actually works better than DEET. So if you've been using Avon Skin So Soft, uh, you may know, you know, it's actually a pretty good product. Any repellent that you rub into your skin, whether it's a spray on or a lotion, is half as effective as one you spray on. So if you're using Picardin or Avon Skin So Soft, you want to use the spray, and, and it's going to give you about an hour of protection, so it's better than DEET. But none of them come close to Mosquito Steve. Um, most industry experts ex uh, believe that um, uh, in about five years, there's going to be heavy-duty regulations on the chemicals we're spraying. So, uh, so I'm hoping that we can be well poised so that when that happens, we're the go-to guys. Okay, we're currently seeking $2 million of Series A preferred units equaling 49% of the Mosquito Experts, which owns Mosquito Steve. Uh, Mosquito Steve is the owner of the liquids and Mosquito Experts is the equipment side. And so uh, minimum investment, $125,000. The exit um, plan, honestly, it's uh, the chemical companies, as soon as we get any piece of the market, they're going to be all over us. They're going to be all over it. You know, like I said, they've, been, they've scrapped their programs. They're going to want to buy guys like us. We've just got to prove the market. So um, I think that's it. So uh, that's a terrible way to end it. It was a great <laughs> presentation, and I ended it with, I think that's it. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. I, I always forget like the slogan and things like that. That's what my marketing girl's out here tonight, and I'm sure she's at home banging on her computer. Tell them the slogan, and I can't tell you what it is. So, so uh, <laughs> I always say, repel mosquitoes, attract friends. And um, so, that's why. Good job. We'll go well, to uh, questions first, and uh, Dr. Penny has the hot seat. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. So, uh, I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. I, I, so the first question, I think, is, the most philosophical of the uh -oh. questions. And that is, if this natural um, formula is better, like you say it is, 
Why haven't all the other companies switched to that? Great question, and I'll tell you why. First of all, I'm little. I'm flying under the radar. And so I've kind of done that by purpose because uh, I didn't have enough money to go big, and so I've tried to stay under the radar. But I will tell you this. The, the industry does not believe that natural products work. They just don't. So the hardest thing I have to do, like landscape guys, man, I can knock them over easy, but pest control guys are a little bit harder trying to convince them that natural products work. Now, the great news is we've got a lot of experience now, and we've got some guys that are doing it. But, uh, but if you look at the big companies, they don't believe natural products work, so they don't care what I'm doing right now. Okay. Okay, fair enough. So I guess the next question is, what stops Big Mosquito from developing this? That's another good question, man. You're full yeah, of I like that you like Big Mosquito. Wow, okay. You let that pass. You know, here's, here's, <laughs> this is what's sad is natural products, because I'm EPA yeah. regulated as far as labels go, I have to put my ingredients on the label. And so I have to give you the exact percentages of the active ingredients. And on the inerts, I have to just tell you what they are. So you've basically got the formula, except that, first of all, it's a lot harder to knock it off than you think. In fact, one of the big companies uh, courted me for two years to uh, use my misting product. And I finally gave them a sample, and I knew not to trust them because they'd actually already stolen from me before. And the next year, oh, and by the way, so as soon as they got their sample, they stopped calling me and stopped uh -huh. returning calls. So the next year, they introduced a natural repellent for misting systems, and it didn't work. It didn't work. The inert ingredients are the in these ingredients, the, um, and the reason I've tested these products, we had, I bet we had 35 different versions of this before we came up with this, and then uh, and then we've we've improved on it since then. So uh, it's really hard to come up with it. Plus, nobody else is out there counting mosquitoes. So when people see pictures of me with the mosquitoes all over my legs, in fact, uh, we did a video this past summer, and, um, um, and I'm standing out with mud up to my ankles, and mosquitoes are all over me in one of my honey holes, and I, I, had, I got these people to stand out there for two hours in video, and they did, and we, we made a one-minute video, sent it in the Shark Tank. I got a call that evening. Shark Tank says, um, I'm on the short list. I didn't get on there yet, but they said I'm on the short list. Must be a really long short list. But yeah. that was just, that was just, so I was hoping to get on in the fall, but maybe we'll be on in the spring. So there is a patent. So there is not a patent. And okay. so we actually have a patent pending on the spray on repellent, but okay. um, we're probably going to abandon it. The problem with the patent is, is that we're giving people. Then, you know, that, that little bit where I'm telling you they can't knock it off exactly, well, when we get a patent, they can knock it off exactly. You know, Coca-Cola and WD-40 don't have patents. Right. The last thing I'm going to ask you is you're valuing your business at $4 million, I guess, because you're looking for 49% for, for, for $2 million, $2 million investment. Yes. How do you get to that $4 million valuation? Okay. So we, it's really it's about research and development. It's just like the guys that invented the little blue pill that, you know, uh, I mean, they spent years and years of research, and they didn't come out and just charge you a dollar. No, they charged you 39 bucks for it, I think. I have no idea. I don't use those, so I'm just, I'm just guessing. So, uh, but, but, you know, instead of a dollar, it's a lot more money. It's because you got to pay for the research somehow, and that's really, that's, that's the bottom line. So I've had two jobs. Um, I started my research in 2002. I've had two jobs all the way up um, through uh, just the last two years. And so I thought, well, I think this will support me now. And so I quit my second job <laughs> a little too early. So, uh, so my off seasons are really a struggle. But, um, but yeah, we're, um, that's really where it comes from. It's, it's a research thing. And I've had people do the valuation thing, and they come up with like $32 million. So I'm not dumb enough to come up here and ask y'all for $16 million for half the company. So... I figure we'll meet in the middle somewhere. <laughs> Describe and rank in order from top to bottom the various markets and the revenue sources that you feel you have. You bet. So um, number one is retail. Number one is retail. And, and, but it's a lot more expensive to hit the retail market. That's the problem. Bootstrappers, as a bootstrapper, I can't do it. Uh, we've proven ourselves well, but that's number one. You know, getting a share of that billion-dollar spray-on repellent market would be great, um, and the, and I think it would be I think it will, you know, snowball once we start getting part of the market share. 
Um, and besides that, then we got the other do-it-yourself products. So we've got products, and people love this. I mean, they love my yard spray. This is actually our best-selling product here. You put this in a hose and spray and spray around your yard. And I've had people put videos on YouTube I've never met before, you know, saying, "Oh my God, this stuff works! Y'all need to go get it." And and people tell me, "Oh my God, we, you know, our dog was dying from fleas, and we sprayed this on the dog, and the fleas fell off dead." And so it's like, you know, it's amazing. So we, you know, we learn about our products that way. So I, my research is primarily focused on mosquitoes, but these products do work on other insects too. We do also have a fly spray if anybody's a horse enthusiast. This will keep flies off for three days. And if you're a horse enthusiast, you know that's that's incredible. So um, and so after that, then I would say the commercial market. So I do believe when we introduce these sprayers, um, that 400 million or, or the yeah, it's about 400 million for consumer market, um, I think that's going to grow to about $2 billion. Um, people don't have solutions they can use. Um, I, I will tell you, so one of the reasons I started working on the portable misters, uh, or some of y'all familiar with the mosquito magnet, how many people in here bought a mosquito magnet? Yes, and uh, they're great boat anchors, aren't they? So um, I've got a couple to sell you. <laughs> <laughs> so mosquito magnet went from like $25,000 to $250,000 to $3 million to $80 million a year in sales for a couple of years. People were throwing money at it like crazy, anywhere from $500 to $1,200 for their systems. The problem is they don't work, so they ended up taking them all back. So they did that two years. Everybody got tired of taking them back, so they went out of business and sold their assets for $6 million. What that told me, though, was that people need that solution. And even if we have a really bad year and only sell $80 million, you know, I can live with myself then. Uh, but, but that tells me people, they're desperate for it. They'll try anything. They really are. People are desperate for solutions, and they're not getting the right answers. You know, I, would like, I try to get people, you know, look, when the salesman comes out to sell you a product, ask him how many times he stood outside and counted mosquitoes. Most of these people have no idea how well the product works that they're selling. They've got none. So... I'm it. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm ugly, but I'm it. <laughs> Going down the road, what percent of your business do you see as products versus services? Um, I see it ended up being um, probably about 80% product and 20% services. So um, I think this is going to replace a lot of the guys out there doing the services. And and so I've actually, I wanted to develop a, an $800 version that's a little bit bigger, maybe has some more bells and whistles on it, because I don't want to cut those guys out. But they, there's only half a million of those systems out there. There's just not that many. So, um, so I don't know. I, I, um, I'm, I'm trying to work with Mosquito Next and some of the other guys, Mosquito Squad actually just started using my products too. So those guys already have built-in business. So if we could get a chunk of their business, if we could convince them to do it, you know, um, if Mosquito Nicks alone would give us 10% of their customers, we'd be selling millions of dollars of product every year. So, uh, so for now, I want to be careful to say I'm going to put them out of business because, uh, because I really need them. I need those guys. Just one more question. Yes, sir. Excluding sales, which is obvious, what do you see as your next three biggest challenges? Uh, really, it's education, educating the consumer, um, getting the word out. So some of y'all may know, uh, so if you've heard of me, that means you probably listened to the ticket. If there's anybody that listens to the ticket in here, uh, the ticket loves me, I love the ticket. And so um, best way to build a brand, you ever want to build a brand, advertise on the ticket. It's expensive, but it works. Um, I tried all the other radio stations. I tried print. I tried everything else. Nothing worked like they did. And so... Um, uh, so I'm sitting here, I'm trying to remember what the question was now. And I went, why was I talking about the ticket? By the way, I'm selling time over here. No, I don't, I don't, I'm not selling for the ticket, but they're great. But, uh, oh, the challenges. So, uh, so what, was, what we learned from that, though, is if people find out about this product, they go buy it. It's that simple. You know, our calls went through the roof. We were getting 15 to 20 calls a day from, a, you know, from one, one ad a day. One, one more quick. Yes. At the state fair, what kind of reception did you get? Got great reception at the state fair. In fact, what's odd to me is I go places and people want to take selfies with me and stuff like that. So bless you. So, um, but uh, but the, the reception was good. This was our first time, and we actually weren't planning on selling product there. 
So they put us on this really low shelf back in the corner, but they, the Texas Department of Agriculture loves my products. They actually want to sell them outside of the U.S., and so they love the products. They use them on their kids, and that's really the thing. That's most of these guys use it on their kids, and that's why they, they love it. So, um, so I'm expecting to be much better next year. Uh, we'll have better positioning and uh, probably do some more advertising and stuff and get in there. But we did all right. We did as, as well as anybody did there. That's all I got. Thanks, sir. <clears throat> okay. Uh, first off, you said you've, you've used a couple of terms, and I just want to be clear. Does it kill or does it repel? So our, <clears throat> our misting repels, and yeah. that's, that's what's, in, what's critical because that's what's killing most of your bees and butterflies is the misting. So the stuff you spray in the yard, it actually does, it has some killing properties in it. And that's why we kill fleas and, and uh, chiggers. In fact, chiggers have been horrible the last five or six years in, in Dallas. And so we kill chiggers. Um, I, I actually bought a tick cage. So, just, so some of y'all know I raised, I have two cages of mosquitoes in my kitchen. So um, that's why I don't date. And so... Um, <laughs> The, uh, but I did buy a tick cage because I want to test the products on ticks. I do believe that um, maybe a stronger version of what we got will work just as well on ticks. So, um, uh, so, those, so for the yard spray, that is a killer. That's really it. It's just the yard spray. The fly sprays are repellent too. Um, and so, uh, so our misting product and our spray on repellent, those are both repellent. Same with the, the foggers or the, the... Yes, this would use, this actually will use the same product that misting systems use now. That I sell when Mos Mosquito Next installs a system and puts my product in, that is this right here. And it is the same product that will go in there. So, okay. yeah, we'll be misting without uh, just repelling instead of killing. Okay, and why do you think, just based on your, the fact that you've given yourself West Nile virus and you live with mosquitoes, so I'm just going to go on your, <laughs> your own knowledge, but why do you think your product is so much better than these companies that have scientists and research laboratories and millions of dollars and you've got your kitchen and, and your cages of mosquitoes? I mean, just out of your, like, experience. Well, it, it, and it really is. It's really, it's just from, because I'm the only one that's testing these things in the real world. It's just, that's... There's the, until they're doing what I'm doing, they don't really know. So right now, just for instance, DEET claims six hours of protection. You're never going to get six hours of protection out of DEET, but that's what it claims on the bottle. And so I can tell you exactly how long it works. So, I mean, that's what this data, well, that's not up there now, but that's what that data is. It says, it, I mean, it tells you exactly when it breaks down. So I test, I count every 15 to 30 minutes so I can tell you. So I've tested, like, Burt's Bees, I'll tell you right off. Burt's Bees is one of the best products I've tested. It's an all-natural product. But it's like spraying cooking oil on, and it's disgusting. And so it's like, well, why would you, why would you want that? So what's great about ours, it smells good. It goes on light. Um, and that's why I talk about, you know, next year's version. It smells like men's cologne. I'm not kidding. I've been wearing that in places I've gone, what is that you're wearing? It's like, well, it's mosquito repellent, believe it or not. It's, you know, it's a, but it really smells that good. So um, the, the proof is that people that buy the product usually become very loyal very fast. Okay. And uh, have you gone the infomercial route at all? Have you had any conversations with them? <clears throat> I've got guys trying to sell me on infomercials. Now, I will tell you, Home Shopping Network con contacted me um, two years ago, right at the end of the season. They said, okay, we want to get you on there next year. Our products were approved. We sent them out there. They were approved. Uh, they were going to buy 2,000 of each of the, the spray-on repellent, the big bottle, the little bottle, and the 16-ounce uh, hose-in spray. And then they went through their purchase. You know, they just got bought by QVC and completely lost touch of them. And, and so uh, we didn't end up being on there. So part of the, that's really part of where I need more help because I need somebody to help me keep those doors open once they get open. It's like BBC America called me and wanted to do interviews and you know, I'm, I'm running crazy during the season because I'm, you know, running to pick up product and deliver it and, and, uh, and then get products over it. You know, it's just You're it's, one it's crazy. Show. It is. And so um, I've got a good, I'm starting to build a team, but it's hard to find people that will work for free. And so, uh, so if there's anybody, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, Charles needs to tell me your secret. So, no, uh, but anyways, it really, so like my, my marketing person, uh, Jennifer, uh, she's basically, she's working for free right now for a little bit of equity. And, and uh, so 
That's the thing is that this is, this is a passion. We were talking earlier about, you know, talking to UNT. I'm the example of what not to do, okay? I fell in love. I, I got a passion for this deal of creating real products that really work and solving a big problem. And, and I'm going to disrupt the market and going to take some bullets for it, I guarantee you. Um, and so it's taken me a really long time to get here. So, uh, so, cause I started the natural products in 2008. So, you know, almost a decade of working, you know, working my tail off just because I, I believe in this stuff. So, um, so I do think, you know, I don't, I don't require anybody to have as much passion about it as I do, but, um, uh, but, uh, I would love to find some, some people that, that, um, help. I really want somebody, I, I want to do what I'm doing. I want to keep doing research and development and talking about these products and helping develop new products and going out there and telling the world about it. Yeah. I would love for somebody else to buy the bottles and the labels and the, you know, and make sure the products get to the retailers and some distribution so I'm not driving all over the place delivering boxes. So would you, so would you be open to a licensing deal then? Um, absolutely. Now, um, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay. Um, yeah, in fact, a licensing deal is attractive in many ways. One of the things that um, uh, that I like to think about is that so when this comes out, um, I still have this formula, and my thought was that there's a lot of people that would love to get their hands on that and private label that. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, I really want to build a brand, but um, if it's something that could bring revenue in, I would be open to you know white labeling something too. The equipment too. Uh, We'd have to talk about it. Now, I'll tell you, there's a long story that goes with that. Do y'all have time? That's okay. I just, I just was there's, curious of if you were talking about both, because you've got both entities in your valuation. Yes. And you talked about $4 million, but you're really valuing the whole company at about $12 million, if, I, if my math is right, because you've got 15% in Mosquito Steve, which really is all the chemicals. You're only giving up half of the equipment side, which we haven't even seen yet. It's not even proven yet. And so and it's actually not even all the chemicals. It's really just this product. Uh, it's, uh, it's your base product. So it's not all the chemicals like the fly spray um, or yard spray and things like that can be moved over. And it's really, so I'm not hung up on structure. Okay. Um, the, and, and my guys, by the way, so my angel investors, we've already crammed them down once. And they know they're going to get crammed down some more. Well, you said it's only eighty thousand, right? The first, the first, the yeah, it's eighty thousand. Okay. I mean, that's a, it's a. So, but they're they know they're going to get crammed down more, and they also know that they're also willing to sell some of their percentage. Mm -hmm. And so, it's not going to be a dirty thing to to do that to devalue people. Um, or actually, they'll their value will go up for less shares. Is what's going to happen. Okay. And it, they're not hostile. They actually they all these people want to see this product succeed. Last two questions. Uh, your, does your formula work in existing misting systems? Because like at my barn, I have a piranha system. Yep. Are you familiar with yes. them? So would that formula work in the piranha system in my barn? Absolutely. In a barn, it'd be perfect. Um, so, I mean, it's, we're really growing that side of the business a lot, and that's really why we started doing the fly spray, because mm -hmm. you know the same stuff that they're putting in your misting system mm -hmm. is what they're telling you to spray on your horse. I know. And, yeah, because we've got it over stalls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so I'm sitting here thinking about that right yeah, now. Yeah, so because... And we also the, put the, the, uh, the deodorant or the, the scent in yes, with it also, which yes. probably is just yeah. as bad. So because this is a repellent, it works great there. Now, I'll tell you, if That's you've got a huge yard and you've got nozzles going around the perimeter of the yard, <laughs> yep. because it's a repellent, you're going to push mosquitoes to the inside. So sometimes we have to adjust systems. Some, that's what the beauty about this thing is it sits in one place and it does this and you don't ever have to touch it or do anything else with it and it just sprays everything. So occasionally though, um, my service providers will actually have to uh, move some nozzles around or just add nozzles in towards the middle. Uh, but I would tell you, so it's misting systems and that's really what got me started on the horse. And by the way, so, so when we started testing this product, I was running back and forth between here and uh, Crescent, Texas. You know where Crescent is? Um, anyway, I was running back and forth between here and Crescent and testing this. And we, we actually, I can keep poop, I mean, flies off of poop. I can keep poop. That's <laughs> so yes. <laughs> what I feed the mosquitoes. No, the, uh, uh, I can keep flies off poop for two days. So with that stuff. So, I mean, there's actually, there's, so that, there's a lot more uh, uses for that that we hadn't even thought about. 
because uh, there's a lot of places where flies and poop are a big problem. And so, uh, so there's, I mean, there's, we, there's well, that's no what usually telling. causes the, the problem. It's not the animals that cause the problem. It's right. the poop that causes right. the problem. Right, yep. Then just the last thing is on the equipment. I mean, misting is not anything that's patentable. I mean, there's a lot of right. aroma systems and misting systems and foggers out there. So do you have anything patentable in your little contraption or? Great question. I should have covered that. So this, yes. The movement of it, and because it's a vacuum cleaner motor, I mean, it's, I probably shouldn't be saying that. There, don't, edit that out, okay, would you? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it's, uh, but that's really what we're doing. We're pushing pressure down in the tank, and that's forcing it out. Uh, but the movement of it, and the timer, and things like that, there probably is some things we can do here. Um, I've got a product design company, so I tell you, my first product cost us four hundred fifty thousand dollars to design. It was with the company I was with back in two thousand four and five. $450,000 to design and engineer this thing. So I've got a group out of uh, Farmer's Branch that will, has designed and engineered, they just need money. <laughs> uh, for $65,000, I have prototypes of this and the little one. The little one is completely patentable. Nobody's using that technology to mist. So it is completely patentable. And it's basically, it's an engineer out of Arkansas, and then I came up with an idea for doing some other things with it. And, and, uh, and it, it's amazing. It's uh, if it was, if somebody had that technology, they'd be building them right now. Okay, that's it. Thanks. All right. You stole like half my questions, but it's okay. <laughs> I can answer um, them again. I'll uh, change my answers. No, it's all right. <laughs> that would be bad. Don't do that. Okay, so part of why I never put a missing system in is because of bees. I want to save the bees, so I appreciate that. However, from a city perspective, when they're spraying, don't they want don't they want to kill the mosquitoes? Because then if they just keep coming back, it's, they're really not. So how is that selling a contract to them? Like, don't they want them dead? Of course they want them dead. And, but how is it working? It's not working. That's the problem. Is that how, it's not do they working. have anything to prove this at so, all? Like, well, well, first of all, the CDC actually said uh, last year when they were spraying at, uh, in Miami, the s director of the CDC says, well, the pesticides aren't working like we had hoped. Well, and that's, that's what we're finding out all over the world. There's been no innovation in pesticides for years. I mean, years. It's the same stuff, repackaged. You know, they're adding more PBOs, piperonyl butoxide is what they're doing. They're raising the percentage of that because the, it's not doesn't help to raise the percentage of permethrin and pyrethrins. So, so that so it is an ex education process. But I'll tell you, speaking of bees, so um, we get I get referrals all the time from the Texas Honey Bee Guild because I can get rid of mosquitoes without chasing the bees away. Cause, but how does it work, like if it's chasing away flies and it's, I mean, I know like you said the lower ones will actually kill fleas, if it's chasing away fleas, or killing fleas, chasing away mosquitoes, chasing away uh, flies, how come it doesn't chase away bees and how do you test all of that? Like are you sitting in a thing of bees too to test it? No, 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 no. We actually, so I've actually uh, started with, in fact I had a radio show for a little while and I had a, a brain surgeon that raises bees and and he came on there because he loved the product and he just wanted to talk about it. But um, so most of that's it's anecdotal in, um, um, information that I have. But I will tell you this: I actually go out and design those systems for them, so that what we're doing is where are the people sitting. So that's what we're trying to do by repelling. I don't really care if there's mosquitoes in your bushes. Doesn't bother me if you're not going to be in the bushes. If you're in the bushes, then. Um, that don't run for Congress. So, uh, but, but if you're, I, so I don't care if you're out in the bushes, but, but where people sit, that's what I want to do. I want to repel them away from the sitting areas. And so we tried, one of the reasons, the things that I created was this, this um, it's a riser and you just stick it in the ground. It's got three nozzles on it. You run a tube to it and you can put it right up next to the sitting area. And so that allows you in, in a fraction of the time, most of your cost in misting systems is in installation. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a half a day to a day of installation and your costs go through the roof. So what I thought was how do we cut back on that? And that's why we did these risers. And so with most yards and with a maximum of two or three risers, I can cover an entire yard. That's why for, you know, 16, 1700 bucks, we can install a system in most people's homes, which is a lot less than the other guys. Okay. And then you, you mentioned online. You said you're trying to get on Amazon. So do you have a web store right now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I got a website. I got a new website, by the way, in the last couple of months. Uh, thanks, Jennifer. Uh, so, uh, so mine is full of information. The problem is I've done this a long time, and I have way more information than most people want. 
And so, um, so she's helped um, zero in on some of the important stuff. Bless you. And then the, um, uh, but yes, we have a web store right now. I do all the boxing up and I do all the shipping out, but we just got on Amazon. But I'll tell you, I'm, I'm struggling with it. Amazon has a problem with Steve Moore and Mosquito Steve. They have a problem delineating between the two different entities. And PayPal does the same thing. I mean, it's, it's a little bit nutty. So, uh, so I'm, I need an Amazon expert. We got the products on there. So I have one distributor who sells to 14 retailers. He's a little guy out in Prosper, Texas. Um, and uh, but we're in 14 retailers, and um, he's got the products on Amazon, but he doesn't do free shipping. The main complaint I get from people is when they don't want to pay $10 for a bottle of mosquito repellent and then pay $7 shipping on top of it, and that makes sense. So I really need to get on with Amazon somehow, some way. I need some expertise. Are there. you selling a lot on your? On your Bless, Bless you. you. My goodness. Uh, we did so. Uh, I think we did about thirty-five thousand uh, dollars this year. Is that year. word of mouth? Or are you doing any marketing to it? It's uh, this year. We pretty much all our marketing was Facebook. I diverted the advertising dollars to do um, to do a video and so and to build the cage. So by the way, so I got this great big cage. It's incredible. So I have to tell you all about this because we spent a lot of money building it. So it's this uh, big acrylic cage, and um, and I've got this two foot by two foot cage. With, we put mosquitoes in. And then we put them in the cage, and then I go in the cage with mosquito repellent on and let all the, <laughs> the mosquitoes out. Oh, my God. And that way we can actually demonstrate on live TV how well the product works. This is on YouTube? Uh, yes, it is. It is on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And so is the Shark Tank. Uh, the Shark Tank video is on there, too. So there's a lot of videos on YouTube. You, you can get real bored looking at all my videos on YouTube. But you can see, you know, you can actually see the mosquitoes on me. So if you like that kind of thing, if you're into that, you know, you torture. You need to optimize the videos on YouTube and. Yeah, I know, I know, I, I, it's, I, and I don't know how. In fact, my marketing, the girl that's helped me on marketing, Jennifer Foster, by the way, if anybody's looking for a good marketing person, uh, she's she's really great. But she's doing kind of the social media and stuff for me now, and it's really not her forte. Uh, she would love for somebody to help us out on that. So um, she's a she's a very smart marketing person, but that's not. I'm trying to earn points if you don't tell. <laughs> That's all I have. All right, thank you. The uh, the thing, first of all, that st stood out most to me, by the way, I've never seen anyone more dedicated to their product <laughs> as you. That's I do sure. I do want to thank you for uh, not... Welcome. Thank you for not bringing your acrylic cage and your thing of mosquitoes here. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, <laughs> My, my first question that stood out to me is you said this, uh, this company, whoever they were, is planning on putting you into all 30,000 of their uh, units, and you know that's going ding, ding, ding. That seems like the most important thing here. How much is that going to generate in sales, and what do you need to do? Do you need anything to make that happen? So, but they, so they have 30,000 customers. They're not going to put us in all their uh, customers yet. They're gonna, so we are actually, that's one of the things we've reached out to them, said we want to help you market to your customers to tell them, about the natural products. They're not in any hurry to change over. So they're really doing me a favor, uh, but, uh, but they have a fear that in a few years, the government's gonna say, you guys can't be spraying this stuff anymore. And so uh, that's, I, I hope they do. I mean, it'd be incredible. For instance, y'all know that in agricultural places where they, you know, where pe kids grow up in agricultural societies, these kids have higher instances of autism and learning disabilities. and and I mean, it's crazy. So the stuff we're spraying is crazy. So, um, so they're actually, they're coming around, but again, they're, they're more about sales. So that's what's most important to them. So we've got to work with them to help educate their customers about this and educate their salespeople about it too. So you don't see a big increase of sales happening immediately. I, we have, so we're basically, my contract with them, uh, it was only 18 months. Uh, and so uh, we're, we will have at least 50% more sales from them this year. Uh, but no, I would like it to be more. That's why we're going to market with them. It, it depends. Yeah, if I put some money behind it, uh, I, I, there's no reason why we can't pick up a giant chunk of those customers. The customers want it. Remember, the customers want it. They just want a product that works. Um, but I'll tell you, we get, like my service providers pick up a lot of customers from those other guys uh, because they don't, service they don't know what to do if you call and say 
uh, with my guys call and say, hey, Steve, uh, or, you know, we've still got mosquitoes. What do we do? Guess what? I get in my car and I go over there and I figure out why we still have mosquitoes. And we, it's usually pretty easy to figure out for me. They don't have anybody like that. And so when you call and say, hey, I've just spent $5,000 on this system and I still have mosquitoes. Well, we'll put more liquid in there. We'll, uh, we'll put more nozzles in and we'll spray more often. And that's why we end up spraying. I've got a guy literally, I hope he's not watching. His customers, they spray six times a day. Oof. I mean, that is, you guys, that's, you can probably smell it walking up and down the street because, I mean, that is, that's really, that's really bad news. See, so you're kind of moving into my next question or answering it, but uh, I, I, last year I paid three or four thousand dollars to have them come and spray every four weeks. I didn't have a mosquito problem, but mm -hmm. you're saying it's ineffective. Well, what were they spraying? I don't know, but okay. they were, it was a spray, and they killed everything. You know, I saw dead well. snakes, dead fish. <laughs> I had no bees. I had no butterflies. Uh. My dog has an extra leg now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's it. So the, um, the, they were probably using, I mean, way, way more than is legally able to use them. First of all, and yes, it does kill fish. Almost all of these products kill fish, and it's right there on the label. They're not hiding it. It's right there on the label. Permethrin, which is one of the ones they use a lot, actually can kill cats. So, um, so, uh, but probably, um, so, you know, DDT, there are people that use DDT out there. And so that's the thing. There's a lot of these guys don't have scruples. And so there's no telling what they were spraying. They could have been using a combination of malathion and some other things. So there also is sometimes there's not a logical explanation. Sometimes you've got less mosquitoes. Uh, in case in point, in 2007, I was out in 2008. The reason that we did the, we, I was actually breeding mosquitoes. Don't tell anybody in Dallas and and I hope because, you don't live anywhere close. Because <laughs> now this was in University Park, believe it or not. Hi, University Park. So, uh, but we these people are getting their house remodeled, and so we unplugged all their water features, and we were literally breeding. You could walk in the backyard, and a cloud of mosquitoes would rise up. And that's why I was getting more than 100 a minute landing on my legs, faster than I could count. We couldn't find mosquitoes. The reason we did that is we couldn't find mosquitoes. We couldn't find any in Dallas. We couldn't find, went with Jeff Tucker, we went to Puerto Rico. I went to Chiapas, Mexico. This is not like Cancun. This is Chiapas. I'm in the jungle. People have plywood homes there. It was, um, they don't wash their hands. And it was really, it was horrible. And so, uh, and so, uh, so we couldn't find mosquitoes in Chiapas, in the jungle. So sometimes, there just aren't mosquitoes, and so uh, there's no telling what it was. Could have been a, a predator. Uh, there may have been a predator that was more prevalent at the time um, or something like that, or it could have been what they were spraying. Maybe they were spraying something that they really shouldn't have been spraying. My, my belief is going to continue to be it, it was effective, and when they over, overhead spray, it's effective. It just kills everything. You know, I didn't have any flowers. I, had, I didn't have any bees. It was all gone. But I'll go on now. Mm -hmm. you, you, uh, you talked about raising 80000 You put in 100000 yourself, and then you said there was a $450,000 design. How did that get paid for? So in 2002, I invented the first, world, the first portable misting system, and we got um, an investment, got a $4 million investment in 2006. Got a patent on it in 2004. Um, the guys came in, it was my first invention, I didn't have any idea what I was doing, I had really bad advice. They came in, put $4 million in and took 80% of the company and then, um, and then said, you know, we don't need you anymore. And I was like, well, wait, I'm the only guy that knows anything about this. And so uh, they ended up diluting me out. And um, it was actually, uh, they just, they were not very smart. The company went out of business. Uh, they built a product that didn't work because their specifications. When you do misting systems, if anybody's familiar with it, you got to have a minimum of 165 psi going through a certain type of nozzle to put the droplets out there. And so, um, and so what what they did is they built something that didn't work, and all the droplets ended up on the ground. And so, um, and why am I telling you that story? Be oh, because oh, because so they're the ones that spent you the 400. You can be a politician, by the way. I know. Yeah. They're the ones that spent. Uh, they're they're the ones that spent four hundred fifty thousand dollars on the design and engineering, and and I will tell you the first meeting with the engineers, I was telling them, guys, you know I've done this. You know this is not new. We've been misting for at that time, you know, sixty years. So this is not new stuff here. And the engineers said, we know you have all that experience, but you know we're engineers. 
And so they built a machine that put out 110 PSI instead of 165. What that does is the droplets are big, they fall right to the ground. And people are calling saying, hey, our machine's leaking. And it wasn't leaking, just all the stuff was falling on the ground. So that's what's beautiful about this. I've never seen anything like this. And I can't tell you why it works other than it's got a variety of droplets. Um, it's got small droplets, so it acts as if a ground spray is happening. But it's got sm uh, smaller droplets that, that mist in the air. And so that's the beautiful thing about this. It is way overperforming what I expected it to. Okay. Uh, by the way, Dale in Manitoba says there's Canada, says there's plenty of mosquitoes. Come on up there. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for watching from Canada. Yeah, thank y'all. <laughs> uh, so now, like now that we're going to go into the time. This is going to be really difficult for you. It is. So this it is, is going to go into the time okay. where you can't talk. Okay. Do you want to take a deep breath? Yes. Yeah. Take a deep breath. I'm gonna. I just. I'm gonna drink water every time I want to talk. I'm gonna take a sip of water. And and so now this is the advice section. Okay. You are not allowed to talk until the audience is through giving their advice, and then you get two minutes oh, to respond is? to any to everybody's advice. A whole two minutes. So okay. no more talking. <laughs> Doctor Pity. All right. Uh, first off, I enjoyed it. I think that was a very unconventional presentation. Um, I, uh, you know, when I initially, when you first came up here, I saw the Mosquito Steve brand, I see the image you have, and I thought you're going to be able to sell a very technical product to an average person who knows very little about this kind of stuff, about the uh, Mosquito products out there. I'm not convinced that we fully got there, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Um, I also want to mention that when, uh, if you actually look this up, Bill Gates, uh, a long time ago, he wanted to generate awareness for uh, health issues in third world countries. He started his presentation by unleashing a live mosquito in the audience. And I'm really glad you didn't do that to start your presentation, Steve. I'm really glad you didn't do that. I can laugh, can uh, I? Yeah. Okay. Um, you can't so, ask questions either. Yeah. So, so, so let me tell you about, I, let's talk about the market first. right? So I'm going to put my business professor hat on. I enjoy this personally. I'm going to put my business professor hat on here. Mm -hmm. I live in downtown Dallas, right? I'm more likely to see a stroller being pushed around with a Yorkie in it than I am to see a mosquito. <laughs> it's not top of mind for most people in this area, I don't think, and you're not gonna be able to sell this product at Target. Right? This is a product for rural America that will sell well. I think there is a market for this, but it's gonna be tractor supply company. It's gonna be rural Walmarts. I think that penetrating these urban areas is gonna be a challenge. So my question then with that is, you know, that for I think you to answer, you know, as, as you move forward here, is just have you already potentially reached the peak of your market by having it available online? Um, and I'll talk a little bit about some ideas that I have uh, as we go on here. So that's maybe something to think about. It's a specialized niche market. I also think that if you're going to look to a specific area, you know, Houston seems like it might have a more of an issue of this. Uh, Florida, I lived seven years in Florida. I would have loved to have you over there when I was there in Florida. I, mean, I think there's, that's a bigger market over there potentially. Now, I want to pivot a little bit, to speaking about market, you focus exclusively on mosquitoes. I, I think, and I'm going to use an analogy here, it's sort of like I feel like I'm coming down with a cold, I'm going to go to CVS, I'm going to buy DayQuil that only fixes my sneeze, and it doesn't fix my throat, it doesn't fix whatever else you got when you get a cold, right? And so I, I don't know that it would take very much to add something so that it's not just effective in mosquitoes, which is maybe a Florida issue, a Houston issue, a lake issue, a rural issue, but maybe it, it also would be useful on things such as bed bugs or something like that that's an urban issue, right? Or something else that might be more palatable. The typical person when they're in, when they're in Walmart or Target, they're not looking for something that's just mosquito. They're looking for something that's off, that works on everything. So that might be something to think about. Um, something else, you mentioned that the that natural products that are available in the marketplace don't work. That's an excellent point. The reality is that the market is going to see your product and they're going to assume it's a snake sales product. Like your, your snake salesman is what are going to think. And they're incorrect about that, by the way. I want to defend you on it. They're going to be incorrect to think that. But there's a perception that if it's natural, it doesn't work. And I think that this is something that was addressed in Charles' question when you said, you know what, this is something I didn't really think about. I've been paying a guy to come here, sprays my yard. I don't know what's in his product, but I know that it works. Does the average person really care enough, right, for this product to be a serious threat to 
the existing products that are in the marketplace. And again, I'm going to address how you can fix that in just a moment. Um, the other thing, and I think this is a big issue, the moment that this sells, you mentioned you don't have a patent. I got, as a business professor, I got to talk to you about that part. You're, you are a stolen laptop at DFW Airport away from somebody else having your entire business idea, having your formula, having your potential future, having that deal with Walmart potentially. A legal recourse, if somebody steals your idea, that you can go after them for any profit. So I do strongly encourage you to think a little bit about that patent idea. I think it's very important to do it. You talk a lot in technical jargon, which is okay. Um, I love roller coasters, right? And I have lots of friends, and I don't realize I'm doing it. I'm getting into specifics. I'm talking about Six Flags, and I'm talking about, you know, the different designers they have. I'm talking about RMC that designs the, the new Texas Giant. I'm talking about how high it is. And I'm realizing, as I'm maybe a minute into this, I've lost everybody, right? I don't have anybody that hears what I'm saying. And so I think that's something else. You, I have no doubt you are the expert on this. You, is, you ooze knowledge um, about this uh, technology and about mosquito repellent. I think that if you are going to stick to the product route, you might want to consider hiring a good marketing firm that's going to package this in a way that the typical person can kind of understand a little bit more without getting its technical names of the, you know, the parts of the formula. I think that might be potentially useful. Um, the other issue uh, uh, is that, you know, you're the expert on this product itself, right? But, but I think when we get to some other things here, such as the service versus the actual packaging, stuff like that, I think that's where we can potentially look at and, and maybe suggest a way to be a little bit more profitable. Let me explain what I mean by that. If you sell the product directly to, to customers, you said 80% you would, you would say is more of a product, 20% more of the service, you might actually find you have more profit by flipping that and make 80% of the business the service and 20% the product, right? It's a niche product that I think the 20% of it's gonna do very well. You might have already reached the plateau of that, but the service end to it, right? You got people like Charles and, and myself as a taxpayer in Dallas that I don't care what happens, I just want mosquitoes gone, right? I just want them gone. You could contract the service with the cities, right? You can explain all this technical know-how and this knowledge to cities, get them on board as clients, get you know, subdivisions on board as clients, get, you know, landowners. And I think that the service they're going to be interested in, they might not be the typical do-it-yourselfer that's going to look for your product in a tractor supply company. So I think there might actually be more um, of the market right there. So um, overall, I'm convinced there is a business here. I'm very convinced that there is. My concern is that where this business right now is positioned, we might look at maybe switching the direction on a little bit and maybe looking for greater potential business, um, maybe slightly in the other direction. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you got to enjoy it. I, uh, I think you've got a tiger on sale. Uh, you need some help with marketing and sales. You know, your, your website is low hanging fruit. You can spend very little money and do a lot with that website. Uh, add a section of testimonials, uh, maybe break down your products and services, make it easy to see what you're selling and what it costs, how to get it. Where you talk about retailers, you've got your list, uh, give their addresses to map to them so you, people can go there. But you've got a lot of, a lot of good potential there on the, uh, on the website. But it's, uh, right now you have to read a lot to try to get a, a nugget out of it. Uh, I would uh, I would hire a commissioned salesperson and marketing person, uh, run an ad on Craigslist and interview some people and get some that that have done it for maybe a different product and give you a story, turn them loose with on a commission basis. And uh, I think uh, if you have one of them working the commercial, one working services, one working residential. One working uh, uh, online, I think you've got a gold mine there. You might even find one that's got the money to fund the advertising it takes to generate the sales. If you don't, I'd like to see you put together an investment plan for an investor whereby he could 
know that all his money is going to be spent on advertising and marketing, and he's going to get a percent of each sale, so he starts getting money on day one. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to get his money fast, put more money back in, but you've got a, I think you've got a product that's got a lot of sizzle. You've got the ability to put a lot of sizzle with it. We just need to find a way to better focus the product, the cost, and how to get it. Uh, I think Amazon can offer a lot of potential. I would, I think it's worth worrying with Amazon to try to work out the bugs because they can sell where, where the market is right now where you can't. And uh, they've got, they've got a great reputation. They got a lot of, uh, I buy a lot of stuff on Amazon Prime just because you know you can depend on it. It's going to be there. It's going to be good. It's guaranteed. Uh, I maybe you find one of these marketing people that that is that knows Amazon and can take it as kind of a specialty. And I think that could be outstanding for you. Uh, you've got a great product to sell online. Uh, I'm I'm impressed. I think you've got a lot of you got a lot of sizzle. We just find some way to to. Uh, uh, separate the wheat from the chaff. Thank you. Thank you. Well, most of mine centered around the question that I had because I'm actually uh, I'm actually very interested. I think it's a I think it's a really good product. I guess my my areas of concern um, are you know if you've got YouTube videos of you in a cage with mosquitoes, <laughs> I am shocked that I have not seen that because I mean between the videos that my reps send me and that Fern sends me on YouTube, I mean. I'm just shocked. We've got to get that video out there, so I need to see that. Um, and if it's not funny, we need to make it funny because uh, I've got some access to comedians and some other people that could that could, might be enough right there. Um, the other thing is that uh, you know I'm a little I'm a little concerned about the commercial the commercialability of of the actual name itself. You know, I like you. I think you're a great personality. I just wonder if somebody sees that because I'm a, a very natural parent. My daughter's seven. Like we have some, you know, I mean, I don't know now. I'm concerned that we have some what I thought were natural mosquito products. And I kind of have that same, you know, methodology. Like we use fluoride free toothpaste and, you know, I try to do my best on that stuff. But I kind of always look at those ingredients and those labels that come from Whole Foods as like, Okay, I'm buying this because it's good for my kid and it's, I'm probably going to have to lather you in it and maybe it'll work for a little bit and maybe it won't. So my concern with your label and your branding is that it's, it's so along those lines that I just don't, to me, this is not a hundred million dollar brand. I mean, I'm just, that's just my personal opinion. I think it's got legs. I really love the idea. Um, but I just don't know if Mosquito Steve is a hundred million or two hundred million dollar brand. And to get to your valuation of twelve million dollars on six hundred thousand in lifetime sales, I understand your time in the cage has been valuable to you in getting West Nile. But I mean, to put a twelve million dollar price tag on that, there's nobody that I, I just don't see that 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 valuation off six hundred thousand in lifetime sales because. I mean, when you, you look at any type of business, everybody has sweat equity, right? And I value my sweat equity a lot differently than you value your sweat equity. And you're saying that basically I'm paying $12 million for the whole company or $4 million for basically your time over the last decade of, you know, of hanging out with the mosquitoes. And to me personally, I just don't see that in its current state and in its current form. If some of these products were finished and patented, and I'm with him, I think that the formula needs to be patented and that we need to redo the brand. I think there could be a $100 million plus company here, but it's, it's a long ways from that. I think this is a great living for you. I think you could kill it locally. You could probably get a couple distributors, a couple sales reps, and you could make a couple hundred grand a year for as long as you want to. But if you really want to go to the next level, in my opinion, We've got to class it up and make it more commercial and get the word out better, you know, maybe infomercial. So those are my thoughts. Thanks. I 100% agree with the branding. Um, we're the natural weirdos, and I spray it on, and it's like, yeah, this is not going to work. Yeah. Your branding has to be the brand I trust to go to. It's like the Honest Company. I buy a lot of stuff from Honest. I don't even know how of it works or not, but I buy it because, I don't know if you're familiar with it, it's Jessica Alba's company, but I buy it because 
I know it's natural and I have two little kids, so I put it on them. And I, you have to A, create a, bit, a better brand, but really sell why this is different from other natural brands. Because you've got the natural brand market, but we all are not convinced that it works and we just kind of cross our fingers. And I think to that level, a lot of education. I, I do think there is a huge market in, in an urban, suburban setting because the Zika virus, Zika, Zika, I mean, my husband and I, this is a sick joke, but we joke like these people are, these pregnant women are freaking out and the chemicals that you're spraying are going to kill your baby before the Zika virus does, right? So I know it's a sick joke, but just bear with us. But um, people aren't educated about that. And yeah, there's going to be people who just don't give a crap. Their fish are dying. They're like, hey, I'm alive. We're good. But I think if you can create that education and you know you got to put money into marketing. My only question would be is if you hired a bunch of salespeople off commission and what can you, and you don't have to answer this right now, what could you handle as a company from a distribution, packaging, creation wise, and what's that level where you're going to have to more sales, hire more people to be able to handle that? I think you're going to, you don't want to hire too much and then not be able to deliver if you're, if you're doing it all. So you really got to find that fine line of what sales where you have to add more people to create, distribute, and all that. But I mean, just marketing, branding, I, I, you've got, I'm, ex, I'm, ex, I'm super excited to try this. I want to buy your fly spray for my mom because she's got horses and I can't stand watching the flies on the horses. Uh, so I'm excited about it, but it's just, it's, it's being able to, to sell that. Thank you. I, uh, I like you. I like the uh, business. And honestly, I'd love to find a way to, uh, to work with you. So I'm going I'm to put most of my advice on what it would take to, uh, to, to, make, that, uh, to make that happen. I'm uh, just to address a couple of other things. I, I believe there's a there's a market in in, in cities. Uh, Flower Mound itself had uh, had a, I think it was an 18 year old high school athlete boy that died. Uh, I think it was two years ago from uh, from Zika or one of those one of those things. I think I think it's a problem. It's certainly a problem here, and you know apparently it's a problem in Manitoba, Canada, where it's 20 <laughs> degrees below zero right now. So. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I, I think you have a good, a good business. The, uh, I, I, I think with most entrepreneurs, <laughs> I think you have an issue with your valuation. Uh, I don't know how you can come to that, uh, come to that number, and it's not a number I could buy into. I also don't think you really need two million dollars. What I'd love to do is sit down with you and figure out what the right amount of money is to get you to that profit level where the profits that you're making is going to expand your your business more so that that would be of interest to me my my biggest concern and i under, i understand what you said and i understand people feel like they've been taken and all but for you to tell me that you had another company doing doing this stuff they they uh, invested a good amount of money into it and now you're just you've now you've recreated the company as an investor that causes me some concern i know you feel like you were you were thrown out and and all but it as an investor it it brings me concern that that could happen again so you said you didn't have a problem with structure but i'm just saying you know, 49% of this, 15% of that, 1% of this, and 5% of that would be a big problem for me. I, I got to look at it as I'm buying you, this idea, and everything in per perpetuity to it. So I wouldn't want to be in a position where one of the companies that I only have 1% in can all of a sudden be making a ton of money, and I put you know, 90% of the money that the company is operating on in. So that's just an area, again, for education, for everybody looking to raise money. That would be a concern of mine. And I'm really interested in, in being involved with you. And that, that to me, is what it was going to, going to take to, to get there. And I'd love to sit down with you and discuss those in greater detail. Uh, and that is uh, what I had. So let's go to the uh, audience for their, their advice. Um, Steve, can you, okay, um, you're, I love your personality, your energy is like <laughs> contagious, so um, good, for, that was a great pre presentation, but I think I would, um, if I had to give you some advice, I think um, maybe looking at daycare centers, they do a lot of outings, I would get like moms, they, they can, you know, spread the word, independent uh, distributors, affiliate marketers, and, you know, I believe that 
story sale and facts tale. I would definitely get some testimonies. I've used this. this I, I've used it, so I know it works. We had an, uh, Charles had an event here, and um, I, we were outside, and Steve sprayed some on my arm, and you know he sprayed it on us, and I'm telling you, it works. Um, I have uh, have some in my car. I keep some over here because I'm here all the time, so I know it works. But I think having somebody give testimonies. Would uh, would definitely help um, a lot. And if there was one person I would suggest you meet in this in this room tonight, it's Cedric Mos Moses. Especially when you talked about City of Dallas. And just a reminder for everybody: when you're uh, talking, please stand up, look at the microphone, and keep your microphone at a steady distance from your mouth. Um, I like you. I thought it was great. I've used your product. I love it. Um, I think at this point, you know, it is all about marketing and branding. Um, I agree with the panel in regards to that. It's, it's just the time to take it to that next level. Um, I don't agree with, with, with going to looking at bad bugs and things like that. Read the book, Good to Great, Hedgehog Theory. Stick with what you're doing because that's your niche. That's what you've been practicing. It's not that that wouldn't work, but it takes away from what you're currently doing. And it takes equal amount of time to make that successful as well as, as what you're doing right now. Um, I'd be curious to see, well, like what Charles says, your structure how the structure is all laid out, and I'd also like to know more about the margins. I think this would be something that could work well um, in the current state that it is as an MLM product, which I've never been a big fan of, but I think something like this would work extremely well in that, uh, considering what the margins are probably are on this liquid. Um, but I definitely think the branding needs to be changed, and, um, and then sales and marketing and distribution, and, and I think it can work very well. I, I too have used your product. It, I thought it worked phenomenal. I did not get a single mosquito bite that night compared to most unnatural products. I thought it was pretty good. But uh, I would, my advice would be, uh, I would think you should spend more time on like social media marketing. I think uh, your videos would be funny, like seeing you in a cage getting. I, I just think that'd be funny. <laughs> Watch, <laughs> maybe I think that could go viral. That's like something that would go viral if you made it into like a parody or like comedies type thing, and shared it. I think exploring those kind of venues for like free publicity and free advertising and having your product seen, and definitely like the testimonies because. You already have three people that just share that can testify that your product does work. That's it. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, to your credit, you've identified it, your marketing as your biggest obstacle right now to success. And I think Mosquito Steve might not be the right brand. Getting your brand out and Mosquito Steve might not be the brand. You are the brand. Steve is the brand. So if you could add other products that you've already touched on, whether it's Mosquito Steve adding Flea and Tick Steve, Horsefly Steve, uh, you know, other Steves out there, then it gets you, you're the product. You're, you're the guy that has the expertise, because clearly you have the expertise. Then it gets you in front of a camera, it gets you on YouTube, it gets people interested in you, and then when they're interested in you, then you can get in and talk about your expertise. But trying to sell the product right now and all that, all the jargon that you use, it's a tough sell. But you're not a tough sell. You're a likable guy. Thanks. Um, yeah, I, my comments or observations kind of fall in line with everybody else from a branding point of view. If I had to uh, suggest anything, it would be taking a look at Burt's Bees and the problem and issue that they ran into because how do you separate who you are, which a great ambassador to your product, how you separate the mosquito and the Steve from each other? Because with Burst Bees, although they did very well in the long term, they had a marketing problem because they couldn't separate Burt from Burt Bees. And even to this very day, Burt can go around the world and he's recognizable. Well, that in a marketing aspect creates a certain kind of problem because now you have to have him to push the product rather than being able to separate the product from the actual man himself to push it. And I'm probably sure that you probably thought about that. But in the short term, I think, you know, a viral marketing campaign would probably be best. But in the long term, how do you uh, rebrand the brand so that it separates the Steve from the mosquito? Thank you. Thanks. 
Hi there, I just want to say that I love the presentation. Um, I really think that you're on to something. Uh, Wes brought up a good point about making um, some funny kinky videos instead of just kinky videos, but what I'm really wanting to see, you kept saying, uh, I'm counting the mosquitoes, I'm counting the mosquitoes. All I want to see is a video of you and four other people walking through the Everglades, your competitors with their stuff on, and just a highlight video of a three to five hour hike. I think if you're the one who doesn't have any mosquito bites, that's easy to see. And maybe there's a video out there, but that's what I kept thinking when you said, I count the mosquitoes. Thanks. I can see a uh, licensing agreement with Whole Foods and Trader Joe's since they're already the market where we go to for natural things. I, I see them as, as natural partners for you. Cedric's been dying to get that microphone. Yeah. <laughs> great, great presentation, Steve. Great Thanks. presentation. Um, I would actually piggyback on what Aaron was actually talking about as far as the private label with the company that's already well known, like a Honest or something of that nature, talking with one of those brands. Just to white label it, give it to them, let them run with it. You give them the story, to educate them how to do it, and let them be your sales force for you. The other thing I would think is that everybody's spot on with the, the infomercial type aspect, but I would think you do it from an educational standpoint and maybe partner up with maybe some of the CDC people of the world and maybe some of the city of Dallas type of people of the world who are facing these problems. They know what's out there and then let them kind of be your testimony from that because they will work with you in the sense of this type of product and then once you have the CDC blessing you, it's over, you know, so that would be my two cents. Thanks, Sandy. Anyone else? Okay. Now. Oh my God. Now you get <laughs> two never minutes. do that to me two again. Minutes. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I, this is going to be really hard to do in two minutes. First of all, Whole Foods and Central Market. So Central Market, I'm, I'm still working on, but I'm actually applying at HEB. HEB asked me to, uh, so, so I'm working on that. But Whole Foods, here's the problem. They don't care how, whether products work or not. The product they feature on their shelves does not work. And I have a problem with that. I have a real problem with that. So um, uh, I, they're supposed to represent natural products. They should have products that work because what happens, people walk out there and go, well, natural products don't work. So they're actually do, they're the anti-business for me. Um, and so uh, the, the business that we did before, so I actually, it was not by choice. I wanted to be involved in that business. And so um, the guy hired his brother-in-law to run the company. And then they deluded me out. And then they didn't want to hear anything I had to say. And I kept telling them, this, the, the, the way they approached the market was horrible, everything. Was, so, uh, but the good news is, is they didn't know enough about the business. So when I went to them and I said, hey, why don't you guys help fund this research I've been doing on natural products? Because this actually beats the other stuff and it's going to be much bigger than this. And the guy said, we don't believe green, this is, I'm not kidding, 2008. I'll never forget the words. We don't believe green pesticides are the future of the industry. And that's what I tell you, that's what I've been telling you. All. That is the problem with the industry. They really don't believe it. So um, as far as the, uh, look, I'm, I, as far as the structure goes, I'm, what you see on that when it comes to money and stuff is what I've been told to put on there, okay? I want to do a deal. I want to be able to make a living doing this because I love doing it. And I want somebody else to do all the other stuff. And so I, I do, the only thing I do, I want to make sure I, do, I can't get, you know, I can't get pushed aside again. That's the only thing. I just have to protect myself somehow. So I'm really going by what people have told me to put on there. So, uh, you know, obviously I don't want to give up 80% if I can be closed out like I did before where I'll never make a dime because once they start taking in more money, I was, I was never going to make money doing that. And then lastly on the brand, I, I hear what y'all are saying, but what I want y'all to all to do is I want you to go home. I want you to think of the 10 most creative mosquito names you can think of. And I want you to Google them. There are none. <laughs> There's none left. They've been doing this a long, long time. All the cute ones are gone. It's really, really hard. We did Mosquito Steve for a reason because there really wasn't anything else and because there's not an authority on mosquitoes in the United States yet. And so um, there's one other one. I can't remember. Doggone it. Oh, as far as other products, real quick. The biggest thing that I get, the most consistent complaint that I get from people that I talk to is that I'm not focused enough. So when I start talking about flies, it's like, well, oh my God, no, you got to get rid of all that other stuff. Well, but we can do, but no, we don't want to hear it. Actually, we, we can do crop protection. 
I mean, you're talking about a multi-billion billion dollar market here in the U.S. We can, we've actually got products that work on all that other stuff. I just try not to talk about it because then people, the, then everybody was stood up and said, you're just not, you're too fo unfocused or something. So, so that's what I get most of the time. But I'm, I'm with you. The deal is, is I want natural products in every area. There's a guy out there that has an oven cleaner that's not a chemical, that's a natural product. And he's just like me. He can't get, he can't get an audience. He can't get people to listen to him. He can't get Whole Foods to pick him up because they don't care if it works or not. And so there's guys out there with these products. I want to change the world. I don't want to just change this industry. I want to change the world. So. Thank you. Good right. job. Well, thank but, you. Well, thank you. Let, let me also... Uh, let me also tell you, as an uh, angel investor, you really ran me away when you said you want somebody else to do all of that because oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lazy guy. I, uh, I want to invest. I, I want to help you mentally, but boy, do I not want to be out doing things. I meant help me find a team to do that. Okay, yeah, I, there I, we go. I, I can, uh, I can do that with you. You can go count mosquitoes and I'll do that. Give Steve a big hand. Good job. Thank you. Very, very Thank entertaining. You. Thank, Thank you very Thank much. You. So this is our, uh, our last uh, boardroom of 2017. Next Thursday is our first boardroom edge. Please come out and join us. And then January 11th is our next uh, boardroom. I don't know who our presenter is yet. John tells me we have one. That's great. I don't like hearing about it till they come anyway. And uh, we'll have Abe from Mark Cuban Companies joining us. So make sure you're here. Buy your ticket early. It's going to sell out. Thanks for watching The Boardroom. Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, all that stuff. Thanks.